Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have another Silent Night, Deadly Night movie review. Now, I've kind of... <laughs> I've pretty much talked about my thoughts for all the other films, except for the remake. The remake's up next. I just got a copy of it in the mail. I've wanted a copy for a while. I finally bought it. It finally came. And uh, today we're talking about the fifth installment of the original series, or the original movies. This is the final of the original films before the remake happened. This is Silent Night, Deadly Night... Well, I guess not part five, it's just called Five. The Toy Maker came out in 1991, one year after the fourth film called Initiation. Now, I have a weird relationship with this franchise. I kind of like to do little recaps for everybody as I start these reviews. Of course, the first film I think is just about as average and decent as it gets. As a pretty easy to satisfy guy, when it comes to <laughs> movies and books and whatnot, I'm not very picky about how things go most of the time. I'll get nitpicks, but I don't really hate most things. I usually give things the benefit of the doubt, even in a series that I love that tries something completely new. The first film was okay to me. The second film was a step underneath that. It's got some really goofy, stupid things, but it's still at least relatively enjoyable, aside from being kind of a clip show of the first movie. The third film's horrible. <laughs> the third film's extremely awful. The fourth movie is kind of taking a complete step back and kind of like this film, reanalyzing what it could it do to be different and uh, I don't hate that movie at all I actually kinda like certain parts of it are pretty solid it's it's a little bit of a mixed bag but overall it's just kind of a little slow for my taste um, and I like slow burn films but that one's just a little too slow there's not enough happening to really reinforce that this film the toy maker to me <laughs> it's one of the best of the franchise and I will stand by this until the day I die this is the second time I've seen this film uh, and there's a great cast in here, a really solid cast for what we have. For a straight-to-video film, uh, I think this is probably my favorite of the original series, if I'm being honest. I know it sounds like blasphemy. I know it sounds like some heresy. I know it's a very, very far place apart from what the films started out as, with just a killer Santa Claus premise for the first two films and kind of the third movie. Um, but I love this. I genuinely love this movie. It's not perfect nor does it need to be. It's complete and utter goofy schlock, and I love every minute of it. It feels to me like, of course, the person who directed and wrote this, I forgot his name, uh, but I looked him up on IMDb, and apparently this particular fellow <laughs> is the guy who also either wrote or co-wrote Friday the 13th Part 3 and 5, 5 being my favorite. I love that flick. Um, that's my personal favorite of that whole series from what I remember. I haven't watched it in a few years now. But usually I do watch them pretty much every single year, all of them, or at least most of them. And uh, Part 5 is my favorite of that series. The fact that he co-wrote that, or wrote it, something like that, just proves my point. Um, I love his work, <laughs> you know. But uh, Brian Yuzna, Yuzna, whatever, came back for uh, from Part 4 working on this a little bit too. As a, I think we did a little bit of co-writing, something like that. Anyway, uh, The Toymaker, what is this movie about? Essentially, there is a young boy who witnesses his father or stepfather. I got clarification as the movie went on, but at first I did not understand who this guy was. Um, this fellow is kind of a mean guy, and uh, this young boy witnesses this man that he, I assume he thinks is his dad, get killed by this really cute Santa Claus toy. Uh, Screaming Mad George does the effects and makeup and stuff for this movie, and it's great. <laughs> it's absolutely great. He is a genius. This is a great example of a movie that he just made go up a whole other bar of classic because of how good the effects are in this movie. Um, this is a very oddball movie. Um, <laughs> after that young boy witnesses his uh, dad or stepfather get murdered, uh, buy this little Santa Claus toy that's literally just a round ball. The little head of Santa Claus comes up. It'll play this cute little chime of a Christmas, like, up on the housetop type song. And then the head spins around. It has these angry teeth, like a Krampus-looking thing. And it starts chomping its teeth, and it plays that uh, that funeral-type death song thing. And uh, it shoots its arms and legs out around his head and basically squeezes this man <laughs> so close to his face, so close to the actual body of the Santa Claus toy that it genuinely makes him not be able to breathe, and he suffocates and dies, and then the toy just kind of packs itself up uh, into a little ball again, and then I guess the police don't know how it, how this guy died. He just choked to death. I don't, I don't know what they thought. It was stupid. Um, anyway, so the little boy gets traumatized by witnessing this whole thing happen, and he gets some Danielle Harris syndrome and just stops talking for, like, ever. And uh, I'm assuming we're cutting to about a year later. 
I don't know if it was a year later. It might. I don't think it couldn't have been a year later. It had to have been within no time leading up to Christmas. Um, this film takes place in like a few days. <laughs> it's not very long. Um, but the woman and her son are kind of dealing with the death of this husband. And uh, the wife is taking it a lot easier, the mom or whatever. She takes it a lot easier than the young boy does. But the young boy is genuinely traumatized. It seems like he doesn't really have a fear of that particular toy, even though he saw what it did. But that guy, that dad or whatever, that was a kind of a mean guy, I don't know if he was being abusive or anything like that. He kind of just seemed like he would probably yell a lot, that kind of guy. So you could say mentally abusive, but still. Um, <laughs> so a lot of it is these two just kind of dealing with the stress after that. Of course, Christmas is coming up. The little boy doesn't want to be around like uh, Santa Claus or anything like that. He just doesn't care. He's not really in the right state of mind as a kid. And um, there's another fellow who we start to kind of watch as he encounters them, the mother and son, he kind of keeps an eye out for them. He works as a Santa Claus in a mall. Now, there is another thing that's going on, too. The mom, in order to try to make the little boy feel better, takes him to this particular toy store nearby in this town called Pedos. Yes, <laughs> I know. Um, this film has a character played by Mickey Rooney, who was a major, major Hollywood schmuck and shill. <laughs> Just prove the point of the kind of idiocy you see coming out of actors' mouths nowadays. He was that original type that was doing that kind of thing. He threw a hissy fit over the original Silent Night, Deadly Night film um, coming out back in the day. And after throwing a hissy fit, now he stars in part five, not even ten years later. Literally not even ten years later. I think it's not even like... I think the original came out in 84, wasn't it? It wasn't very long, is what I'm trying to say. Not even like eight years later. He shows up in this film... And uh, he's kind of the main antagonist. He plays a fellow named Joe Petto. Yes. Joe Petto. And uh, he has a son named Pino. Yes, I know. There's a lot of sexual innuendo to this movie. Uh, <laughs> so, these two are a very interesting twist on this movie. This film is a little bit of an offshoot of the story of Pinocchio and Geppetto. And that's very wild stuff. That is an oddball thing in this movie, and I love every second of it. It just gets better and better and better. And Mickey Rooney is kind of a drunk. He kind of abuses Pino, his son, quite a bit. Uh, Pino is a very oddball kid, and I'll tell you this. He's like probably 16, 18, somewhere in there. This fellow playing him, I don't know who he is. I don't know who this guy is that they picked up to play Pino. But Pino is terrifying. He is a creepy, creepy fellow. And that actor absolutely killed him. It's not just the script. It's one of those great examples that if you had the wrong actor in this role, he would have ruined this movie. He would have ruined that role, an integral character in this story. Pino is an integral, integral character. It would have been ruined if anybody else had been put in that role. That guy is the best actor in this movie, and I will stand by that as much as I like Mickey Rooney. I mean, when it comes to his performances, he was in the, um, the Santa Claus is Coming to Town movie back in the day as the Santa Claus himself. Uh, I love him in Phantom of the Megaplex. I think this is Mickey Rooney's best performance, even though it probably sounds stupid. It sounds, to me, is my favorite of his. Um, it didn't come out too long after this. I think it was like 2003, something like that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so there's a very odd undertone about Pinocchio in this movie, and it feels a little tacked on. But as I watch the movie, I realize this time around how much it's a part of this movie. How much it's almost like the soul and vein of this movie. As weird as that is to say, I really, really think that in the best, most complimentary way. I mean that. I really love this movie. I don't know how else to explain it. It's got some great gore when we have some gore. It's not like, you know, people losing arms or legs or anything like that. Nothing like dismemberment type stuff. But the gore we do get is wild. And like I said, there's a whole killer toys effect in here. We're assuming that Mickey Rooney and Pino are involved in this somehow because they own a toy store. <clears throat> um, I really like this flick a lot. I think there's some solid tension sometimes, but not like a scary type of tension. Just like, it's the kind of setup of what Alfred Hitchcock had talked about once upon a time. You let the audience know there's a bomb under the table, but you don't let the characters know. And the characters sit there and you're anticipating what's going to happen. You have a little bit of that in here. Um, and I really like that. I like how completely bizarre and weird and over the top and just creepy this movie is at times. I think the third act of this movie, the first time I saw it the other year when I watched this whole series for the first time, 
I will tell you right now, that movie, this movie, <laughs> part five, got to me so badly in that third act because of how just it just gets under your skin. There's just something about it. And I'll be honest, if the remake didn't exist, this would probably be my favorite of the whole franchise. It is a great flick. It's not, like, amazingly made or anything like that. It's a straight-to-video film. You can't expect that out of it. Uh, it feels low-budget. It feels straight-to-video compared to the other films in the franchise, particularly the first two because they have more of a higher budget being theatrical releases, even though I don't think they had any business being theatrical releases, but they did, <laughs> you know. But I, I personally could watch this every year, every Christmas. I could personally watch this every single Christmas and never feel like I failed and <laughs> didn't enjoy something I saw here. It's a blast. It's over the top. It's weird. It's wild. It's just everything I love about goofy cinema. Everything I love about straight to video movies. When you have a good gem out there, I think this is personally a great gem. I think the acting's great. I think everybody brings something here, except for the kid. But the kid is a, a '90s kid actor. You know, I'm not expecting, you know, uh, whatever the chick's name is from Game of Thrones, Macy, whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not expecting something like that. But I think everybody did a really good job here. I think the effects, once again, are the biggest thing to come to this movie for. I love the killer toys aspect. I know the franchise is very different now at this point in the series because of how far it's gone away from Killer Santas. But there's so many great Easter eggs and references all over this movie to the previous films, even to Part 4. Even to Part 4. Clint Howard is even in this at one point for a very small scene. He's even back. There's so many great moments in here. And I'm glad, it made me happy as I started doing this review series. My my good my well, maybe I shouldn't call him my good friend, but my friend Grayson, the Goosebumps kid, who watches these reviews and has been following me since my original channel, Michael Goosebumps fan. Um, Grayson even said in one of the comments of one of these videos recently that he couldn't wait for me to get to part five, because far, part five, part five, listen to me. It's too early. <laughs> it's too early. I need to go back to bed. Uh, part five is apparently one of his favorites, if not his favorite, too. And I'm glad somebody else feels that way. I see very few people saying that online. To me, it is one of the best. I think it's a blast. It just puts a big smile on my face. How often out of these reviews have you seen me act like this? I'm just stoked. I'm stoked about how I got to watch this again today. Um, it was such a blast. I just, I had so much fun just with this movie. This movie's fun in the, in the best possible way, in a way that we don't get most movies nowadays, which is a shame to me. Um, we get some fun films with surprising twists here, twists here and there every once in a while, like uh, Better Watch Out, but we don't get things like this. This is why I love the 80s and the 90s, this kind of movie. You didn't get stuff like this in the 2000s and 2010s and 20s now. You don't get stuff like this now. Which is a major shame, in my opinion. It's a big horror goofball fan. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a shame to me. Anyway, I really don't have much more to say. Uh, I recommend Grayson the Goosebumps Kid if you want to go check out his channel. He does some Goosebump stuff. Um, he's kind of on a little bit of a hiatus right now, I think. But uh, great reviewer. Really enjoy your stuff, Grayson. Thank you for all the support here. And thank you for the support on these videos for these Silent Night, Deadly Night reviews. Anyway. So, that is my review for Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toy Maker. One of the best of the franchise, and I will die on that hill to the day I die. Um, why did I say it like that? Anyway, <laughs> so, one of my favorites, personally, I can't wait to do the ranking video. I'm already, probably going to already piss people off with the ranking video, just because I'm not such a major advocate on most of the franchise here. Um, I don't even love most of these movies, but this is one of the ones I do love. When it comes to The Toy Maker, if I had to rate this film on a five-star basis... I would hands down give this a 4 out of 5 stars. I love this flick. I think it is just fantastic. It's so fun. It's so enjoyable. Uh, there are some cheap parts to it that kind of reserve me from giving it a 5 out of 5. But I do give it a 4 out of 5. That's a major recommendation anyway for me. <laughs> you know, I just think a 4 out of 5 for me, it's usually based on just something that's just not quite there. Just not enough yet. But I do think it's a really solid script. It has some great acting choices here. Uh, I really like what they did with this movie. I wish we had a sequel to this one, but I, it would ruin it. There's no way it would be as good. But the creativity in the vein of this movie, in the script, in the killer toys aspect, the creativity behind this movie is just wonderful. It just works so well, and I could not possibly recommend this enough to you. Anyway, have you seen Silent Night, Deadly Night 5, The Toy Maker? What do you think about it? Put your thoughts and comments down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this flick in particular. Uh, compared to the other ones, the other ones are all kind of dry. 
for the most part, and depending on what film we're talking about. Um, this one is the big surprise to me. This is the one that I was like, okay, this is probably going to be the worst one. And then I watched it for the first time back in the day, and I was amazed by how much I enjoyed this. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, four out of five stars for me. And now I will be doing a review for the remake at some point. I don't know about today. I might not be able to do it today, depending on what time I can kind of get everything going today. Uh, I'm going to have the house to myself today, so it's going to be kind of nice. I have to go to work in a little while, though. So I'm going to try to watch the remake before I go to work and then review it either today or tomorrow or tonight, something like that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. May the Lord uh, bless you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, wow, I love this movie. It just it put me in such a good mood. It's such a great way to start off my day. Um, anyway, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Goodbye.